and hello one more time chugging right along the last video was a little bit quicker but this one will probably take a little bit longer this is my top 10 characters i really want to i personally want to want to see in smash brothers but most likely won't for one reason or another <laughs> um well not so much i think they, they do have a pretty good chance of, they do have a good chance of making it in. in fact some of them have a really good chance of making it in for one reason or another and i will explain uh number 10 number 10 um uh, well before i get to that honorable mention a little below number 10 i think some character from one of the rareware games now almost all of rareware's biggest ips um say say like some things like killer instinct battle toads perfect dark um and my number one pick uh, oh conquer conquer from uh, the bad fur day which which was on which was act who actually came from uh diddy kong racing and if there was one character from rareware i think i actually think would make it in it would be banjo kazooie um but rareware is owned by microsoft now but you know what else is owned by microsoft minecraft and that's still on nintendo system so and i believe um i believe it was stated that they wouldn't mind they, they, uh, somebody at microsoft did state they wouldn't mind banjo kazooie being put in or rareware so rareware as a whole i probably i would like to see a character come come in um I think most people would, I would like to see Battletoads because it was a game series that I really like growing up. Um, but most likely the one that everybody would want from that company, if there was just one character, it would probably be Banjo, Banjo-Kazooie. Especially since Ukulele came out in, in that vein. Um, now, number nine I have down is Namco because Namco helped with the development of the previous game. It's very likely they're helping with this one. Uh, Namco got Pac-Man in. They technically had Heihachi, Heihachi in, um, as a, um, as a me costume, but, uh, if there was, uh, if there was one character I wanted to be in, it would be, uh, Siegfried or Siegfried slash Nightmare, depending on which game in, 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 in two Soul Calibur, in Soul Calibur and Soul Calibur 2, they're basically the same person, but from Soul Calibur 3 onwards, they were separated, um, cause it was a fascinating character, it was a character that was possessed by evil and then eventually conquered it and expunged it from himself and then he works to, to fight it and they became rivals because of it and um one of my favorite characters one of the reasons why i fell out of soul Calibur is because from soul was, nightmare was my main in soul Calibur 2 <coughs> and then soul Calibur 3 came out and then siegfried and nightmare was split up and they both became lesser versions i was like <laughs> you took my akuma and made two dans out of him <laughs> i was mad but uh if there's one character from Namco i would like to see it would be siegfried nightmare but um uh, it would probably more more likely be somebody from Tekken, since that series has a more recent uh, think, uh, Tekken uh, I think tag tournament was on Wii U, so that has a more recent uh, a more recent itineration that showed up on a Nintendo console. But I think almost any Namco character is up for grabs. But, but it's going to be between Soul Ca Tekken and Soul Calibur, especially because Soul Calibur I think the Soul Calibur Six is uh, on its way, and that would be a good way to get the Nintendo audience hyped up for that and engage how much interest there would be in putting on Soul Calibur on there. Um, in that vein, I, I had another honorable mention. I, I wanted personally um, uh, Ryu Ryu Bateson from Breath of Fire Two, which is my fa one of my favorite RPGs. Um, if, if it's not Breath of Fire 2, it would probably be Xenogears from uh, the, the original Xenogears on PlayStation 1, all-time favorite RPG. One of those two. Um, but honest, in all honesty, looking at Neo, like, I, I originally had Ryu from Bre to, to represent Breath of Fire, but because, one, his name is Ryu, and there's already another Ryu on the roster, and two, he is a swordsman that, sh that can morph into a dragon you might see a problem with that there's already a lot of people are already uh freaking hemorrhaging because there's too many sword fighters and then you'd have yet another sword fighter morphs into dragon so i think um cat slash rinpu would be a more interesting character to have one we could always use more female characters but two she's just more interesting she has a more interesting story uh, as far as her you know her how how rare her race is in that game and Breath of Fire 2, I think. I just personally think Breath of Fire 2 was the best out of all of them. Now, um, number 8 was another one of the... Like, yeah, this one was another big tie because I couldn't decide which of the two. But they're both named Bill. Bill, 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 Bill. Take it away, Reggie. Bill! 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 <laughs> but, um... Yeah, this is like shared at number uh, number 8. Bill Riser representing Contra, Billy Lee representing Double Dragon. 
both of these are big franchises, especially from their era, because one, they represent the arcades, two, they represent the NES. And yeah, I mean, just just the simple fact that like we had like it's a it's a it's a fighting game slash platformer that technically Double Dragon also was, but like we haven't seen there hasn't really been much of Double Dragon except for Double Dragon Four. Um, that was Double Dragon Neo. That was Double Dragon Neo, and then I think uh, Double Dragon Advance. But outside of the Double Dragon hasn't had like Double Dragon for as iconic a series as it was, three games on the NES and two games on the Super Nintendo. Technically one because if you really want to count Double Dragon Five, then I might have to freaking stab you in the back or something. Cause... But like yeah, Super Double Dragon like was a great game. I'm honestly surprised Super Double Dragon wasn't on the Super Nintendo Classic. You know, but Double Dragon Two was on the NES Classic, so they had a Double Dragon game on the NES, but not on the Super Nintendo. It would have been a great two-player game to have, especially since the they would have either they would have had to put Final Fight Two or Final Fight Three on the Super NES to have a two-player side school and beat 'em up game. And if you really had to have a side school and beat 'em up game, I think Super Double Dragon would have been better than either than any of the Final Fight games. Final Fight One should have been it, but Final Fight on the NES was not a two-player game. They they really screwed that up. Uh, and again, and Contra, one of the most famous the, the most famous code in video games. Um, and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an iconic, again, another iconic series, side-scrolling, like, you know, side-scrolling platformer shooter. Um, Contra 3, I believe, was also on the, well, Contra 3 was on the, like, the, I think Super C was on the NES, and Contra 3 was on the Super NES. So, if you're gonna keep putting Contra games on your classic consoles, why not have a Contra character in your freaking Smash Brothers game? I mean, yeah. So this is, I guess this is the gun, but like, I guess uh, you, your move list would be limited, but you can make Bill Riser work kind of like Mega Man, where he, his, his normal move is just the, the shot, and it works just like that, but unlike Mega Man, he can aim it while he's warming, so his regular shot, the, the one you get at the start of the game, that's his default attack, and he can fire it in, you know, in any direction, that would be how it works, and then his specials would be like, you know, spread, the laser, crash, Final Smash would probably be just the crash bomb from, you know, the Contra 3, the Alien Wars. Um, localize the, the thing is that localization of that game varies from country to country. Like the original game in in German in German in Germany was Pro Protector because they had laws against violence, so they they couldn't be people; they were robots. But in then Contra Four on the on the Game Boy Advance, I think, um, took all the characters, all that canon, because I think uh, Mad Dog and Scorpion, I think, or or uh, Jimbo and Sully from the Super for Contra Super, it was always Bill, it was always Bill Riser and Lance. But some games changed their names for no reason. So Contra Four like took all those new characters and made like took all those character names and made them full on characters of their own rather than just XBs of Bill and, and Bill and Lance. So and you can like like I said in my previous video, like all eight of those characters. Bill Riser, um Lance Bean, I think his last name was, Bill Riser and Lance Bean, um, Mad Dog and Scorpion, uh Jimbo and Sully, and Pro Protector One and Pro Protector Two. That they, they, you could that's that's eight characters right there. That, that you can have on one slot. You can get the entire, basically the entirety of the Contra series through that one character slot. Alright, um, number seven. I would have said he was a long shot, but that's what I said about Bayonetta, and Bayonetta made it in. So if Bayonetta made it in, then Dante has a real shot at making it in. Um, I would like to see Dante versus Bayonetta, but I also would like to see Dante versus Link. I mean, that's another dream match I would like to see. I mean, uh... You know, that would be just to be too much fun. Two silent protagonists, two silent swordsmen protagonists, and then you have a swordsman slash gunman who always mouths off, and then you have Bayonetta who has just all the guns but was always talking about And just two, it's just, he's just a really good character, a really good character representing a, a, a good long running series that has yet to make some kind of impact or, you know, like some kind of impact, some kind of a uh, splash on Nintendo. Um, Another honorable mention in that regard, because I'm talking about Dante, would be um, Beautiful Joe. Since uh, Beautiful Joe and also uh, Amaterasu from Okami. Now, I don't really think they have a real shot at being in. If there's one character from that, those three I would like to see in, especially because they're all technically Capcom, I would like to see Dante in the most. Because Dante Bayonetta, is, is, Dante Bayonetta would be a dream match that people would love to see. I mean... If you have, like, we got, you know, Sonic, Mario, Sonic, Mega Man, and Pac-Man in the same game. It was a dream match. Nobody ever thought would happen, and guess what? We got it. But, you know, Bayonetta versus Dante, that'd be something I would love to see. I'm, I'm sure everybody would love to see that. And Dante versus Link, 
again another dream match that i would love to see um i honestly like let me just uh, on a on a tangent here let me just say i really just think the best thing to do which is the just nintendo versus capcom should just be a fighting game on its own because since uh capcom always gives nintendo the shaft when it comes to the marvel games none of the marvel games not just the not just the standalone marvel games like uh, children of the anime marvel superheroes but none of the versus games Mar you know x-men versus street fighter marvel superheroes versus street, uh, marvel superheroes versus street fighter the only thing they ever got was tatsunoko versus capcom and tatsunoko was a bunch of characters from you know an animation company most of which never showed up in the u.s so a lot of that was lost that that big old crossover didn't have any real impact on the united states so i think nintendo versus capcom would be a better crossover to have and we could have so many more fun matches like that but uh again moving right along number six Again, because uh, because Konami is really on the in, in, on the shits with the gaming community because of the way they've been handling their business and their franchises. Um, this character representing a long running franchise that got its start on the NES, Simon Belmont, uh, Castlevania. I mean, you know, the Castlevania series started on the NES, and, and like Castlevania is on Castlevania is on the NES. The original Castlevania is on the NES, and Super Castlevania is on the Super NES Classic. So. If you're going to keep bringing Castlevania on your classic systems, you know, just like freaking Double Dragon, why not put him in Smash? It makes the most sense. Uh, he's, he's, it, the, the Castlevania series is, is a long, it's a long running series. Like, well, I think well over 20 years old at this point. Deserves to have a bit, you know, if, if Smash Brothers is a celebration of gaming, Castlevania deserves to be part of this pantheon. And Simon Belmont, more than any other character, deserves to be the one at the helm. Alright, that was number six. Number five. Now, I've fallen off this series myself because of how convoluted it's become, but um, I know that the that it was just announced that uh, this game was delayed or, or just finally coming out, but not until 2019. Sora from Kingdom Hearts. Sora, the Kingdom Hearts games does have a presence on Nintendo, but it's mostly been the handhelds. In fact, um, Kingdom Hearts, I think Chain of Memories, that was the game that actually qualified Cloud. And again, the, the qualification thing where you have to be on a Nintendo system was never official, but Cloud did show up in that game that was, so that did make him eligible. Now, Sora himself is, has been eligible for a long time, but a lot of the a lot of the Kingdom Hearts mini games, uh, fucking side story games, like that's one of the reasons why I fell off of Kingdom Hearts so hard. It's because the, the, the storyline and all the games are so freaking convoluted. The, the Kingdom Hearts storyline is like American comics. If you don't follow, if you don't buy this game, this comic, you know, buy event or buy like Amazing Spider-Man, Uncanny X-Men, Incredible Hulk, uh, freaking West Coast Avengers, East Coast Avengers to follow this one storyline. The Kingdom Hearts is like if you don't buy Kingdom Hearts, Dream Drop Distance, Kingdom Hearts, Alpha Two Turbo, Kingdom Hearts, you know, oh look out, Scoob! Like there's just so many games. It's like I I, I stopped trying to follow it. And like you just you just been waiting in Kingdom Hearts three for like over well over a decade, and you still and all the fans still have to wait till twenty nineteen. So and I feel bad for them. Like it's just like, well, I feel I kind of feel bad for you, but like I, I, that's why I fell off that train a long time ago. I, I've long since stopped caring, but I still because the Kingdom Hearts franchise is still so iconic, and it does. And if it ever doesn't mean anything to me, it means a lot to so many fans. But uh, because Square Enix, because Squeenix allowed Cloud to be in, and as iconic as he is, if Cloud is allowed to be in Smash Brothers, I don't see why Sora can't be. And especially because uh, because they kind of you know put the screws to their fan base by delaying Kingdom Hearts. They've, they've always been having development trouble for this game. It took them so long to finish fun that uh, Final Fantasy what the thirteen, like it took them so long to get that out, and then there's been problems with that with the DLC, and now Kingdom Hearts three is going to be that far out and then final and final fantasy 7 remake is going to be having its own issues so they're going to need to do something for pr to, to appease the fan base so allowing cloud to be back in smash brothers it's what he was I, that's why i didn't put him on any list because i know he's going to be in but it would be a great pr move for squeenix so it's like you know we're sorry we're, we're not going to get you you're going to have to wait until 2019 to, to to play kingdom hearts but guess what you know this year this year you'll be able to play sora in smash brothers so and then, and then if Smash Brothers, well, not if I think when Smash Brothers gets delayed, because unless he's unless they've actually have been working on this this entire time ever since the first game finished, I don't see them actually making deadline on 2018. I don't think a Smash Brothers was ever released on time, so 
but Sora making it in would be a long would go a long way into, uh, for Square Enix to, to make up for for the for the delay of for the long delay of keeping people waiting for so long for Kingdom Hearts three. Uh, number four, number four is more of an open slot, but uh, if if there's any of the Guardians from Breath of the Wild that I would like to see in, it would be Mifa because she's personally my favorite. But um. I would like any of the Guardians to be in because they're they're such they're great character designs. They got their own amiibo. They have their own side stories. They, I I, I love the dynamic. I love the the dynamic that they have with with Link and Zelda. I just love that the idea that you know Link has always had to be alone when it comes to that. And now to, to defending Hyrule. But the Champions was a great addition to that uh, to that at Pantheon. And we need care. We need more Zelda characters other than Link, Zelda, and you know Captain Ganondorf and Toon Link. And like Ninja Zelda, so like you know, like I don't think I really don't think Sheik should have been an, um, an individual character. I like the transformation gimmick, but I guess for the term, for, in terms of fighting game balance, you just have to stick with one. Um, if they're not, I, I want them to rework again, Dwarf, because Ganondorf represents the Triforce. You kind of have to have all three. You can't have Link, Zelda, and not Ganondorf. So he kind of has to be in, even though technically he isn't part of the Breath of the Wild. But we're very we're very clearly getting Breath of the Wild Link. So if we get Breath, of, we're gonna get Breath of the Wild Zelda, and it wouldn't be the first time. Um, the Sheik that we got in the previous, in like previous two games, were 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 updated designs to to match. Even though that uh, even though that uh, Sheik didn't show up in like you know Breath of the Wild or uh, not Breath of the Wild of uh, uh, Twilight Princess, the, Sheik was given an updated design to to match Link from Twilight Princess, who was in uh, the pre who was in Smash Brothers. So. We're gonna. So I don't see them not. I don't see them not putting in uh, Ganondorf unless they put in unless they straight straight up put in Ganondorf from. Uh, unless they put in, oh, they just pull Ganondorf from Hyrule Warriors, which would make a lot of sense. Um, I did have crap. I, I think I delete. I ended up erasing my for. I did have Linkle as a character I would have liked to have seen since Linkle was technically. If there's one character that really represents Hyrule Warriors, if Warriors. Hyrule Warriors. If it um, if it wasn't gonna be Lana or Sia, which I don't think have enough moves to make them interesting, it would probably be Linkle. There need to be more Zelda characters that aren't clones because we that's what we got with Ganondorf and, and Toon Link, and I don't want to see Toon Zelda. So I would like to see the the Guardians. If 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 we're not gonna get all six, I don't. I would like to see all four Guardians as their own characters, but I think we're probably only gonna get one, maybe two, um, or which you could have a pair. You'd probably have like Mifa, you know, Mifa with Rivali. But Mifa's my favorite all of them, and she's the one I want to see in. Top three. Shouldn't be said surprising because these were among my top three in the in the previous excuse me, previous video. Number three, Sammy from Advanced Wars. Uh, Advanced Wars, again, as I said in my previous video, I'm dumb, so I don't do strategy very well. But Advanced Wars was a game series that that through through really really good game design and really good character design pulled me in. Somebody who's who's too dumb, who's too too dumb. For, for for strategy still got into advanced wars and still really really liked it and of the characters of, of the characters i think sammy is the one that stands out the most as a really good character because she represents infantry which is the backbone of that game and um, like i said again more female representation would always be a good thing and i like her as a character i would like to see more advanced wars games but i guess you know they're in their days to ruin number two again no surprise we're long overdue for a year of daisy nintendo but yeah Princess Daisy, I think. Um, she's a bit of a long shot because there's already so many Mario characters in, but they don't have a Mario... They don't have represent... As I said in a previous video, they don't have representation for Mario Strikers, so they could just give her a Mario Striker Sam... Uh, she, she is... Especially because she is a tomboy, a, a, a moveset built around Mario Strikers would really work for her because Mario Tennis, since they've got that coming out, that's already basically... Waluigi as his assist trophy, and Peach already has that as a move, essentially. So, working her as, like, she deserves more than just being a freaking color swap for freaking Peach. She deserves much better than that. Especially if, if you're going to do all this for, for, for Luigi, you know, since he, he basically, the Mario Brothers were twins, you ba he basically was a recolor of Mario, but you've, you, you know, you changed his design, you've characterized him, you've given some some real character, and then he shot off into his own game. So, like, why not do the same for Daisy? She's got it much worse than Luigi ever had. She's, she's an XP of an XP. But Daisy deserves better. And number one, shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody, but anybody who really knows me, but Midna from Twilight Princess. I'd really love to see her in as her own character. 
Like I said, um, Zelda could use more non-clone characters, and she would be brilliant. She's already in an assist trophy, so it wouldn't be that hard uh, to mention her in. She wouldn't be the first uh, assist trophy. I've, I've met many people I've listed on here, um, especially, I believe, Dylan... Yeah, Dylan and Dark Dylan and Dark Samus. Dil, Dil, yeah, Dylan and Dylan from uh, Dylan's Rolling Western and Dark Samus were already assist trophies. But you know what? Little Mac was originally assist trophy, and then he became a spawn character. So I think Minda can definitely do it, especially since she has you know two separate forms. Most people recognize her from her imp form, which was a brilliant design. I love both both designs. As a character, somebody who you know creates characters, draws characters, all that, I really, really love her design, especially because she's so different from everything else that came out before her, especially in her own series. But it would most likely be Imp Minda, but I would not be opposed to Twilight Minda being her own separate character. If if it's one of the two, I would prefer Twilight Minda because I would like to see more of her her true form. But I wouldn't I wouldn't be disappointed if it was Imp Minda or Ipna. But my favorite character is my favorite Zelda character, period. So I would like to really like to see her in. Um, my previous number one made it in, so, you know, maybe, maybe I'll get lucky and I'll go, I'll be two for two, because sometimes I, I say that shit and not thinking it'll happen, and it does freaking happen. Well, Inkling, Inkling didn't make it in that Smash, the, the previous Smash, but she's the, 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 the mascot for this nun, <laughs> the first new blood for this one, so, I thank y'all for joining me, um, I will probably go now watch the, uh, the Microsoft conference, because I've been skipping that to get this, uh, video ready. And I think I need to get some new lighting because this yellow lighting is freaking burning me up from here. So I will be doing a live stream. I'm not sure if I'll do be doing that on Twitch on YouTube. I will let you all know one way or another. I think I have been reconsidering doing live streams on YouTube. I've been getting a couple of new subscribers on YouTube recently. I think I just hit 130 today. I think I just two minutes ago, I think I just hit 130. Somebody just followed me. So... <coughs> <coughs> um. Let me just be saying because um, it's hard for people to admit that these wrongs are done. So I want to be the kind of person that that goes against the grain. So I initially stopped doing live streams on YouTube because I was I was really mad at the way they they decided that they're going to demonetize everybody that wasn't already a big name. But it was pretty. I felt I was pretty selfish because I was I was lashing out at YouTube, and I don't have very many fans, very many subscribers. So the few of you that have watched me and have stayed and have continued to watch me, I thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. And I, and I realize. It's not up to YouTube. It's not up to YouTube to, to make me a better to make me a better YouTuber. It's up to me. I have to do better. I have to be better. So regardless of what YouTube does, you know whatever regardless of whatever happens, if I get an audience, it's going to be because of me, not be because of YouTube. So I'm going to keep making the content that I want to make, and you know if I can make a living off of it, that'd be great. I do have a nine to five technically, and in fact I have to work tomorrow, so that's why I'm probably not going to be doing a lot of the live streaming for for whatever E3 uh, stuff happens. But um, I will probably, you know, just do, I think that would be a good way to, 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 to come back to YouTube on a regular basis is to do a live stream for YouTube. So I've been live streaming my gamings on Twitch and I'll probably continue to do that. But um, I will probably, I'll probably, I will do a live stream for E3, a live E3 stream, uh, stream for uh, Nintendo. I did, a, I've done live streams, uh, I've done live streams, I've been doing live streams. There's a lot of the, um, a lot of the predictions that I've been doing, the, like we've already had uh, like two or I think three of them came true. Um, we were watching, <clears throat> I was watching videos of Monster Hunter Double Cross on J on the Japanese eShop on the next damn day. Capcom announced that they were bringing Monster Hunter Double Cross over to the Switch in the U.S. And uh, my friend you know, Caramel was saying that oh Best Buy canceled their Gamers Club the uh, Gamers Club thing during one of my streams, and then the next day it was all over the news and the game killed, and then I confirmed that. Game freaking best by cancel that shit and then freaking so had to say something stupid shit about devil may cry 5 and one of the things i have seen on youtube so far was that devil may cry 5 i think did finally get announced so watch my streams people and say some shit offhand because it has a good chance of being true <laughs> oh god that's why i'm really gonna be mad at myself when the fucking ra when the rabbits fucking make it into smash i'm gonna be freaking beating my head against the wall like do a freaking 10 minute video of me beating my head against the wall because the rabbits are going to be freaking freaking smash oh my god why did i why did i freaking do that oh my god all right no to blame for that but myself but um so again thank you all for joining me i will be seeing you here on tuesday 
for the live stream. I will be doing a I will be doing a live reaction. You all feel free to join me in the chat. We can all watch it together, have fun. E3 is a big big time for us. This is uh, for for the gamer culture, for game for gaming fans. This is basically our like this is our draft pick. This is our you know fantasy football thing. Technically, I guess Smash Smash Brothers would be the Super Bowl. So this is our draft pick. So I invite you all to join me. Um, thank you for all who have subscribed to me. Um, please do follow me on Twitch because I will still be live streaming there. I'm still trying to build an audience. Um, I thank uh, my brother Dribble Turtle for helping me out with that, and everybody who's been helping me out on Twitch. Um, everybody who's been helping me on YouTube. And shout outs to all of you who've been um, who've been following me. Um, thank you all, and I will see you in two days at E3 Nintendo. Watch them put the screws to me yet again. See you next time. Ninja James, I'm just playing.